by, you know, Sterling Sharp's eyelids flip up. I don't know if you ever noticed that. Weird looking fella right there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Sparks Report for October 14th. 14th. 14th, 2020. Yes. It is. <laughs> oh, Mad Maddie the Moose. I got a doctor. And the Honorable Muggs is with us as always. Running down all the local stories. Pot of print. Just kicked the buck. Butts of the Ackies, Ox, is it the Ackies of Scotland and Edinburgh? Ox was on scene, it was cool. But you can find out about that on the Egg Shape Ball Show. I think we're filming that tomorrow night. But right now, we're talking, what? I was gonna say, for all you hearing impaired, all the, the, all you hearing impaired people, that's why you're talking extra loud. And you can hear now! <laughs> yep. There you go. <laughs> But this is some sports show. All oh, right, here come the judge. Here come the judge. I, I can't beat the booze with these openings lately. I, I can't. You're good, unscripted. You're, you're killing it. Nice hat, by the way. Thank you, Falcons, baby. Right. We'll yeah. talk Falcons in a little bit. Find out how the playoffs went. Uh, playoffs. Mm. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> you're killing me, Moose. Uh, Doing a little backtrack. We're gonna backtrack here a couple, since we didn't do a show last week, and because the doctor was out two weeks ago. Uh, Vacation. So, so uh, what we're gonna, what I'm gonna do here is gonna recap the disc. We have some district golf and tennis champions to acknowledge here in the past few weeks. All right. So we're gonna start. We're gonna start with golf. How, Four. How's how's your golf game, Moose? It's horrible. Horrible. I don't golf. Big Rich is the golfer in our house. Long ball hitter. The llama. The yeah. llama. The Dolly llama. Lunga. The Lunga. Lunga. We'll start off. Uh, we'll start off with the team champs. Abby tonight's on the boys' side in Triple A. The team champs. The Comets. Yep. The Comets is always led by Anthony Sebastianelli, David Harris, Matt Heckman. John Comerford and Terry Hurst, the five-man team there for having tonight's day, were 13 shots better than Crestwood in the team competition a few weeks back. And then over the weekend, they defeated Sealands Grove in a state qualifier by 25 shots. So having tonight's, they're on their way to the state championships in a couple weeks down in uh, down in uh, Heritage Hills Golf Course in York. Uh, on the girls' side, we had uh, Holy Cross. Holy Cross! You got me when I had coffee in my mouth. <laughs> oh, that's exactly yeah. what I was going for. Right. Holy Cross, the girls. Holy Cross! <laughs> they were the girls' team champions in Double A. Emily <laughs> Oprepke and Rachel Mackerel, the two lead. Holy Mackerel! <laughs> the two lead golfers. The golfers for Holy Cross groups, Lady Crusaders, and uh, the team champions of Triple A were Scranton Prep. Lauren Wallace and Christine Fitzpatrick. Hey, Preppy. <laughs> How's Kelly Kapowski doing? <laughs> and my cousin met uh, A.C. Slater a couple weeks ago up really? in New York. Yeah. Wow. Does, does Mario Lopez still do the Miss USA thing? I don't know. I haven't watched that recently. Uh, Is he still dating Mama? I thought he's Jesse married. Spano. Jesse Spano. I thought he was married now. Anyway, anyway we're getting way off course here. Literally. It's like my five iron went 300 yards into the woods. We're on the course. Yeah. Uh, the individual golf championships were last week at Elmhurst Country Club. Uh, we had uh, 14 individual qualifiers advanced to the second part of the golf tournament, which is regionals. We'll start in girls double A. The champion, uh, Hannah Janoski from Valley View. Uh, also joining her in double A, were the uh, two girls I just talked about from Holy Cross. Holy Cross! Emily Oprepke and Rachel Mackerel. Holy Mackerel! <laughs> yep. Funny as second time. Yep. Uh, girls AAA, the, the champion from Wall and Paul Pack, Julia Santo. Uh, remember her from earlier in the year? Mm -hmm. Ox, if you have that picture. Yep, thanks, Vox. Uh, from Delaware Valley was Dana Hunt, the second place finisher. In girls AAA and Molly McWatt from Wall and Paul Pack also qualified for the regionals in girls AAA. In, in boys AA, uh, second place was Dave Lopatic from Dunmore, shot a 78. Also shooting a 78 was Dom 
Mancelli from Holy Cross. And then uh, there are a couple others from Dunmore that qualified. John Barone also shot a 78, and Mike Weber shot a 79. That's, a, that's like my front nine. 78, 79. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's like my five holes combined. <laughs> In a, in a boys triple-A, we had Terry Hurst from Abbey Tonight's the champion. Shot at even par 72 up there at Elmhurst. Awesome. Uh, Nick Johnson from Scranton Prep, 74. Former first baseman of the Yankees. Uh, Mr. Sebastian Ellie shot a 75. And Nick Beckish from Abington shot a 76 to, to also qualify for regionals. They will be at regionals tomorrow, so they'll probably have already played by the time this gets up box. So... Yeah, good luck to them. Hope you all, all did well. Hope you qualify for the States next Monday and Tuesday at Heritage Hills Golf Course in New York. And then the team championships is the following Wednesday, the 23rd. So that takes care of golf. Uh, we're going to do a little tennis. Girls tennis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the single, uh, first of all, the singles champion, they weren't champions, but we... Uh, Grace Riley was from Scrape Prep was the runner-up in Triple A, in, in Girls Double A, I should say. Uh, I'm my notes are a little screwy here today, right? Yeah. Grace Riley, Scrape Prep, Double A runner-up. She lost to Natalie Jolene from Wyoming Seminary in the final. Uh, Tyra, Tyra Abdallah from Abbey tonight. She was the Triple A champion. Uh, she lost to uh, Maggie Manchester from Williamsport in the sub-region because we have a sub-regional with Williamsport and AAA in Jersey Shore. But she was the uh, girls' AAA champion by default because she was the highest-ranked District 2 finisher in the AAA bracket. In the AA, the, the, the doubles, I should say, the, uh, the, AA, the AA champions were Emily Johnson and Grace Riley of Scranton Prep. They defeated their Scranton Prep counterparts Emily Yakubak and Tatiana Klago in the final. 6-4, six, 6-3. Six, I must break you. You got that before me. I was going to get that. <laughs> <laughs> you will lose. <laughs> you will lose, Apollo. Uh, the, yeah, the, that's, that's the double A championship. If he dies, he dies. The triple A <laughs> final, though. Was uh, the AAA sub regional final was decided between Williamsport and Jersey Shore. So the, the two teams from District 2 actually had their own championship match in AAA, and that, those went to Emily Poshis and Kara Parada of North Pocono. They beat Snooky and JWoww from Jersey Shore. No, they didn't. They, oh. they, they uh, beat the team from uh, Wilkes Barre Coughlin. Oh. Data Schneider and Al Alala Assad. From Wilkesbury Coughlin in the AAA final, 6 1 5 7 6 1. Uh, so, Greg, uh, North Poco, tennis, those two girls, uh, tennis, it's always Scranton Prep and Abbey tonight, so it's very nice when somebody else can win the districts up there. So, always, you get a little bit more respect. Oh, West Side tennis player was in your only start. Yep, that's off. Uh, uh, by the, by the way, uh, because there was only the one true champion in District 2, Emily Johnson, Grace Riley, they will be the only ones heading to Hershey uh, in the beginning of November for the state championships. The team championships are being decided this week, so next time around we'll, we'll uh, make sure to acknowledge them. Uh, I need a quick timeout before I go in my football, so Moose, if you want to talk okay. some Falcons here. All right, we had uh, some playoffs, round one of the NHAFL playoffs for this weekend. Uh, as, as far as we're concerned, the Purple Pride of West Side, the C team won 28-6 over Wilkes-Barre. They will be playing this Saturday, October 19th at Western Wayne at 530, uh, playing North Scranton. Oh, that's a, always a big rivalry, West yes. Side and North Scranton. Yes, the B, uh, the B team won 25-6 to six over Valley View. They will also play next Saturday at Western Wayne versus Abington South. There's another big rivalry right there. And the A team lost to North Scranton 33-0. Two weeks in a row they lost. North Scranton A team is just... They're tough. They are very on it. Uh, rounding out the rest of it, Western Wayne beat Abington North in the C. 
North Scranton be Monroe, Tonkanic beat Lackawanna Trail, B Games, Abington North beat Lackawanna Trail, Abington South beat Monroe, Western Wayne beat Carbondelet, and in A Teams, Lackawanna Trail beat the Carbondelet, Abington South beat Wilkes Bear. They say over there, Wilkes Bear. Nobody says that. And Abington North beat Blue Ridge. See, it ties back to the golf there. there you Blue go. Ridge. Back to you, Mugs! Alright, uh. Purple so Pride, wait, what side? Yep. Uh, seven weeks complete in the high school football season. Uh, I've got a new top ten here I want to crack out. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to over the weekend. I'll explain why in a few minutes. <laughs> uh, number one, still the Dunmore Bucks, 7-0. <laughs> uh, Dunmore looking more, more like they're going to be going into the playoffs with an unbeaten 10-0 record. Daquan Buckley just continues to impress every time he touches the ball. Awesome. Work already going on 1,300 yards rush, 1,279 yards officially rushing after another big game against Lakeland over the weekend, 34-12 victory. They get a huge run called back in that game. Oh yeah, I think, yeah. yeah that, that, I heard a lot of. You think he had officially he had, in that first half he had 10 carries for 220 some yards. Holy mackerel! No, we yeah. covered her. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's one of the best backs that we've had in the area, probably since uh, his brother, Michael Perry, yeah. a few years back, you know, so it's fun to watch and uh, enjoy the, the next couple of games. Yeah. The Bucks got a good team. Yeah. Good line, so, they can run the so ball. We'll yeah, like I said. Uh, the, uh, the big game over the weekend, uh, Scranton Prep was the victor, 21-13 over Abby tonight's in the Battle of Unbeatens. So Scranton Prep remains number two in the countdown. Hey, Preppy. Yeah, uh, Pat Marino had a big game against Abington, 152 yards rushing for Scranton Prep as they appear headed for their own undefeated season. Although they still have a couple games, including, I, I guess you could say they have a trap game this Friday with Valley View. I mean, Valley View this year hasn't been the, the, the same team that they've been in recent years. But I can remember two years ago when the roles were reversed. Scranton Prep was, an, was one of those teams Valley View was unbeaten, yet Scranton Prep won the game, 6 0. No, 7 6, I should remember. I think I remember. That was the 7 6 game when, when Wartman played. So Scranton Prep better be ready for that game on Friday. Usually you have a big win like that in a big scenario. I have a big letdown. Yeah, so, so we'll see what happens with Prep. It, all cylinders appear to be clicking on both offense and defense right now. Uh, number three on the list, uh, Old Forge. They are six and one. They continue to, to they continue to dominate after their loss to Dunmore. They put up 50 points in the first half against Lackawanna Trail on Friday night. They, they are they are headed for a big game this Friday at Carbondelet. Up to Carbondelet. And, and that's a tough that's a tough uh, test. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, number four, Abby tonight's after the loss to Scranton Prep. They. They really struggle trying to run the football, from what I was told. Uh, J.C. Shaw was the leading runner. Well, it's the big Shaw. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, really wasn't that. Uh, he really wasn't the Shaw we come to expect last week. He, He's getting old. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, the, the running game that Shaw was the only, was the leading rusher with only 40 yards rushing. That, uh, but. I don't know. Appetite to Scranton Prep, they appear to be headed for a rematch just like Dunmore and Old Forge in single A. So we'll see what happens if they play again. So wait, we got to wait and see for those games, okay, I guess. Make sure, make sure both team, all those teams take care of business. Taking care of business every day. <laughs> uh, number five, <laughs> the Carbondale Char Carbondale Chargers, 7-0. and uh, like I said, they have, this is this is the game that that they've been waiting for because it's up there in Carbondelet. They'll probably they have a huge turnout up there, and Old Forge will always send their so that'll be a big crowd up there in Carbondelet. And, and for them, this is really to see what what kind of team they really have. I mean, they had some games in the last few weeks against Tonesdale, Lackawanna Trail, where where they where they found out a little bit about themselves, but. They'll find out a lot more about themselves this week. Because Old Forge appears with that big line, and, uh, yes, Cabbage running the ball for Old Forge. That will be a very entertaining game up there in northern Lackawanna County. Uh, moving ahead, 
uh, the number six and number seven teams have their own showdown this week. Uh, Scranton is five and two, and Delaware Valley is four and three, and they will be at Scranton Memorial Stadium on Friday night, where the winner, in all likelihood, controls their own destiny for a district playoff spot in Quad A. Go Knights! Yep, the the, the Knights, uh, with a second half rally a couple weeks ago, retained the bell, 42-21 uh, over West Scranton. Jake McCarthy continues to impress. Not much you can really see. Scranton. What hasn't been said about this kid already? Yeah, Scranton and Delval, probably arguably the best rivalry in the last three, four, or five years in uh, football around here. Yeah. They've, they've been going at it for a while. They both have had great teams recently. Yeah, and, oh. and, and Delaware Valley, they, they're a lot better football team than they were in the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Delaware Valley, just they were young but talented. Once they got the experience, once they got these kids in, with uh, Brett Cohan set, uh, settled in at quarterback, he's running the show up there. I mean, I mean, you can't replace Brian Shore, but you can certainly play well and, and still win football games, and that's what Brett Cohan's done behind their big running game with Lex Rosario. He's, uh, Rosario leads the team in rushing and receiving for the Warriors up there. 622 yards rushing, 212 receiving for the Warriors. So that'll be a big game uh, this Friday at, at Strand Memorial Stadium. Uh, Lakeland, number eight, they are four and three on the year. Two weeks ago, they had a big win over Mid Valley, 43-15. Uh, obviously, the, the I mean, Dunmore was Dunmore was a challenging game as you might expect losing up there. Uh, but Lakeland controls their own destiny for, for one of the double-A playoff spots. They close with Western Wayne, Riverside, and Honesdale. Three teams that they should be, although it's high school football, you never know what's going to happen. So Lakeland is 4-3. and three. Uh, the, the team that I'm most surprised with right now is Susquehanna. They have gotten on a, on a hot run here. They beat Lakeland a couple weeks ago. Uh, Kyle Cook, the first-year head coach, is has really got these kids believing up there in Susquehanna County. But uh, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see what they do the rest of the year. They have Lagawanna Trail this week. Uh, then, they, then they play Old Forge at Carbondale to close the year. Those will be tough games for them if they want to get in the playoffs. But, but, but you can't help what that guy's done up there in, in just his first year running the Sabres. And uh, uh, rounding out the top ten is Mid Valley. They, they bounced back after that loss to Lakeland, 36-20 uh, over Western Wayne. They have a big game. They play at Dunmore in two weeks, so so they need to win their other two games, which is Riverside and Honesdale, to probably get into the playoffs themselves. So uh, that's my top ten. I've, uh, that's pretty much all I've got to say, at least for, for my show. Awesome, Gavel Beck. I think the doctor, we're just going to touch a little bit on the uh, Patriots and Boston Red Sox. Maybe a little Penn State and overtime madness with the mugs putting down some Tom alcoholic Brady. beverages. You got some beers going on. <laughs> yeah, we're growing our beards for Boston here. Yeah. He, he, don't, he does the, the 5 o'clock shadow. That's his beard. Mugs started oh, growing his beard does. three months ago. That's good. He started growing his beard back that. in August. He liked the stubble. Yeah. Oh my! A lot of yeah. women can't handle the, the, yeah. the manly mane. Yeah, you're 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 right. It's like the chain of evolution <laughs> here. Like, yeah, I, I, right. I was thinking yeah, right. I was thinking last night that what is what is the doctor gonna say when his Red Sox in an O2 hole with their offense not hitting, and then all of a sudden like all a, that change like a lightning bolt. Not only did the Red Sox find their hitting stride, they tied this series. How what do you think, Doc? What do you think? Well. The Tigers pitching is, you know, arguably they have the best staff. I mean, you know? I mean, Sanchez, the, in game one, really, the way he pitched in game because we all know that Scherzer and Verlander are big game like pitchers. 14 out of 15 innings, the Red Sox didn't have a hit until he squeaked one out the other night, and yesterday until the seventh inning, the, yeah. they got the first hit. I love it when they call me Big Pop. Me. I mean, is uh, there? we had a nice spirited debate on my Facebook, Muggsy jumped in on, about how clutch David Ortiz is, you know. Well, was, the, the, was, the big, yeah, the big, the, the big thing, the big thing is, is uh, uh, who's more clutch? Is it Carlos Beltran of the Cardinals right now, or Big Poppy of the Red Sox? Big Poppy. And of course, the, your friend was talking about, well, well no, no one's ever gonna hit three home runs in a great world. cameraman, by the way, Brian Fees. Shout out. I don't know if he watches us or not. Well, but, make uh, him watch it then. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, but, I mean, my, my thing is just, you know, watching baseball the better half of my life. I've I, I never been, and even Yankee fans can attest to this. Whenever you see David Ortiz up, uh, forget like whatever numbers. If he has men on base and you're down a run or two, you just picture the ball going over, over the wall. And, and it was He's done it in huge playoff games, back against the wall. Uh, Going down yeah. two two to zero in a series is catastrophic, and especially when they have to go go up against Verlander in Game Three. Exactly. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, they, they were talking before because it was the first pitch of the at bat with, with him. Ortiz had never had hadn't had much success against Benoit in his career. Then all of a sudden, the first pitch he gets that that fat. I guess the fastball miss. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you what, I think you would agree with me, Doctor. Ten years ago. Torrey Hunter would make that catch and uh, fly into the bullpen. Uh, ten years ago, he'd probably be playing center for any team he was on. So yeah. He might not have a chance. But that, that, that was that was a good point that you made. Torrey Hunter is the most famous home, home run, run robber of, of all time. time. He, he really is. He even robbed more home runs than Willie Mays Hayes. Yeah. He's so, not, yeah. Say, he hey, is. Willie Mays Hayes, you. Uh, <laughs> so he's like Mays and he runs like Hayes. Is that right? Yeah. Or is it runs around? like shit. <laughs> hey. Bleep. <laughs> it's a kid's show. But, uh, but yeah, you're right. Um, anyway, it's 1 1. Go back to Detroit. They get Verlander against Lackey tomorrow night, maybe tonight when you're watching this. Uh, yeah. well, tough matchup for the Sox, but I think they have it, the momentum. Right yeah, now. It's, a, it's a whole new series. And uh, I guess we could say the Cardinals, we could pencil them in the National League. Oh, boy. About what, 72 hours ago, the Dodger bandwagon was full. You. you couldn't even get on there. You couldn't jump on the Dodger bandwagon. Now they're all chunk. now. Now it's, it's two games at St. Louis where they only got two runs, yeah. and they, they lose three, two, and one, nothing. But, St. St. Louis is perennial World Series contender. Yeah, so, and, and even he, without Albert Pujols, has been their best player for you know eight years. But yeah, yeah they got a good team. They got good. They're pitching. the heart of the heart of the champion. They came back against the Pirates. Yeah. I wanted. I really wanted to see the Pirates. Most of us did. You know, yeah. Of, yeah. But. But now they got to go to L.A. We'll see if they can, you know, they say a series don't start until the home team loses a game in any sport, you know. So we'll see if the Dodgers can bounce back. They might have the best lineup, you know. They well, might have the best pitcher so Hanley, in the majors. Hanley Ramirez is, uh, I guess I guess he's going to play the rest of the series, uh-huh. but we'll see what happens. I mean, see how effective he can be. And, lo- and, losing, and losing that game with Kershaw in game two really yeah. was the – was the because de- you really want – you really need him to be at his, and you always want to split, you know. Yeah, if you're the you road want team. Split in the first two games of a of a game seven. Yeah. You know? But uh, yeah, but we'll see what happens. Looks like the cards they got a stranglehold on the series, and, and yeah, and, we'll, and, see, and we'll, and it's, we'll see what happens. But it's tough to see them. Long, long, that long way to go on those series. And uh, a few hours before the the big Boston comeback at Fenway Park, over at, over in Foxborough. There was another comeback oh. from another player. I, who, yeah, the Red Sox. The Red Sox took their cue from uh, from that uh, good friend of ours, Tom Brady. Tommy Brady. Well, Dave Ortiz is probably the most beloved Boston sports figure. He, maybe he's one A, one B is Tom Brady. Or and, or and other way around. Comebacks. Other way around the way. If you if you call, if you're well, a football if, fan, if you more by Briggs, but Red Sox is the more beloved team. But, but I'm just saying, if you follow football more yeah. than Brady's 1-8, okay. but it doesn't matter. 1-8, 1-B, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but... Brady's have to move. Oh, I, that was a good line, but that's good right off that you put up on the Facebook page. Yeah, I, I thought that, yeah, I thought that was appropriate. I mean, what, I mean tomorrow is the six-month anniversary of the, the tragedy at the Boston Marathon. So, but, but, I don't know, it's, I think it was just... In the cards for Boston yesterday. Uh, yeah, I mean, to drive. I mean, the way seventy yards. I mean, with, Belichick with finds, one minute, no yeah. timeout. Belichick finds more creative ways to pull these football. Twenty, they're down it's twenty cheats. They're down twenty four twenty three. They in their own territory with three minutes left. They go for it on fourth down. Don't get it. They hold the Saint. You New figure Orleans. the game's over there. Then you hold New Orleans to a field goal. Get the ball back. Brady throws it to. Wherever he threw it to, gets it intercepted. Then you think, oh, now the game's over. Yeah. But it was at a point where the where the Patriots still had a chance. They they got the they got Brady one more shot, and I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And you're always comfortable with Tom Brady as your quarterback, but he's my Rob, favorite Rob, quarterback this year. Rob, I'm not, I'm not yeah, Rob, 
not very comfortable <laughs> with for, them. With those, yeah. he's throwing a bunch of no name. For, you know, for, for all the credit we gave Rob Bryan, he certainly didn't play well. That his team didn't play well that last series, especially in that last series. Yeah, they did a little prevent, and Brady picked them apart. Yeah. Uh, Five seconds left. He has Tompkins with that nice pass in the corner. But you know, of the end zone. but you know what, Tugan? Brady had he had to one up my team. He really had to one up his old coach. Yeah. If, if you yeah, that. if you're not if you don't notice here. Oh, you, oh, you mean Bill Billy O'Brien, his yeah. old coach, he famously got into an argument with Penn yeah. State. Uh, they'll be their signature winner this year. They had a tough yes. year coming in. But lost a few games to uh, yeah. They, teams they had a they, they had beat. a gut check a couple weeks ago against Indiana. They really weren't Great sure. Great transition. Did I say that? Great transition. You you really weren't you just sure. Just all the transition. With that yeah, team, man, but it's okay. Yeah, you really <laughs> yeah you really weren't sure where they were gonna go after the, that lost to Indiana a couple weeks ago. But I'll tell you that I was at that game. And that's probably I, I don't think I could go to football, baseball, but I can go to all these sporting events. For another 20, 25 years, that's probably going to be the one on my list. You think? Uh, homecoming after a tough year, proud Penn State alumni and students. And, and, and it was there. it was bleak. It was, yeah. They were down seven with 50 seconds left, with no timeouts, and a true freshman quarterback. I don't care how great you you perceive to be at, at 18 years old. You don't really think you a can. A moment like that, 100,000 people there. Yeah, I agree. He looks great. He was he down seven before the game? He did. <laughs> I don't know if it was seven, but seven of those. Was, oh, what are they? The Monkey Boys down Penn State? Those drinks? It was, <laughs> it was. It was a pretty good. It was a pretty good number. I can't. I can't. I can't count offhand. But yeah, I, I'm even today. I'm still in recovery mode. But yeah. Uh, but but it was a great four overtimes. And, and your heart was being pulled in 8,000 directions every time. Yeah. Michigan has a field goal, they miss it or get a block. Penn State. <laughs> Ugh, yeah, it was. Hey. Yeah, but that's that's like a game like a game that you would have with the Red Sox. That's a game you would just you. That's a game you're always gonna remember. You always remember that, yeah. Especially this year, you know, homecoming and you know. Uh, Probably good things to come. They got some young talent on that team. Yeah, I'll they tell you. Really it, and you're right. It, it probably unless if they can find the only way that's going to top this, if they can go two weeks, find some way to go into Ohio State and beat them. That have to be a big Ohio State letdown. I yeah, they played before. Tell Honey that. Dragon that. Yeah, but but, but I'm just saying. Game. I'm just saying that will pro this one will probably be the signature win of the year unless they can find and they'll give it their best shot. They they certainly. They'll certainly not go in. They certainly got everything to gain, nothing to lose out there. Shout out to the Pittsburgh Steelers for finally getting uh, a win. You talked about the other Ryan brother before. Right. Uh, yeah, you know what? Rex Ryan. The Steelers, the Steelers had to win. Either. Every team in the NFL has to, they should have to win a football game. Jaguar staying with the you Colts, think, too. You think? Knock, knock. Who's there? Owen. Owen. Owen who? Owen six Giants. I'm so sick of that. Seeing that thing. Yeah. Owen seven. You, you can just. Owen eight. How about I'll tell you what. Yeah, your your boys have a big game this week. Cowboys and the. Who would have thought the three three and three versus three and three were first place in, in the NFC least on the line. Remember when that division mattered in the world? They were like yeah. Hey, house. They get, hey, they. Remember how bad that. Uh, Cardinals division was when the nine and seven won it. Seahawks, and, yeah. And the Card and the Cardinals went to the Super Bowl. Same with the Seahawks too. Yeah. Uh, you never it, know. It, 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 the, the talent fluctuates in the NFL. It buys you a ticket to the dance. We'll see. More, more, more to come on that. Yeah, yeah we're getting, on. we're getting there. But uh, Eagles won yesterday too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it, it, we're getting there. And uh, the Chiefs and Broncos, the only undefeated teams remaining in the NFL, who would have thought that at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Maybe uh, John Elway and his family. Uh, yeah. We'll <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, they don't meet until week 11. So Broncos and Super, Super Bowl favorites. So that'll be good. Yeah. So, but unfortunately, next week Broncos Colts, right? Broncos the Colts in the Sunday nighter. All right, that'll be a good one. Manning returns to Indy. That'll be that'll be a very interesting ticket out there. But uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. That's all I got today. That's yeah. all you got. Well, then that has been another episode of the Sports Report. Thank you, MJ Spot Crane Rental, for sponsoring us as always. Coming up after the break, Shannon Sharp. You're watching MaddieVision.com. We do. We gave Shannon Sharp another spot.